Over the weekend, an anonymous Twitter user managed to go viral by tweeting an elaborate story of murder and romance. Yes. It had a happy ending. It did have a happy ending, but the tale was so elaborate that it seemed too good to be true. So New York Magazine's Intelligencer decided to look into it. And joining us now is the author of that article, associate editor for New York Magazine's Intelligencer, Madison Malone Kirscher. She's here with more on steps to potentially spot fake news. But I think we have to remind people how this story yes, let's, line went. Let's, let's talk about it. If you didn't it. see the tweet. So we may have a couple of the tweets uh, that we created as full screens to toss up there so we can show you exactly uh, how this all began. So this was a tweet from uh, an anonymous user who tweeted uh, that his father had died and he started putting flowers on his father's grave and he right. noticed that there was a grave that did not get any flowers so he started putting flowers on that grave. Then he found out that that grave was a man who may have killed his like his members entire of his family. family. <laughs> and so that's why he wasn't getting flowers because no one was alive in his family right, anymore. Right. And so he felt so badly about it that he went to go find the graves of his family members, his right. wife, yes. and to put flowers on those people on those because people. they deserved it more than this than the murderer, murderer than the murderer. Here. And then as he does that, he meets the love of his life. We're really wrapping He's it up. Wrapping up. But <laughs> yeah. it went on and on for a number of tweets and so many people, so he meets his wife right. at the grave of one of the, um, the family members and so he tweeted this whole thing and it went viral. Everybody was tweeting about it. I tweeted about it and then Except I shared Madison. it. Except Madison. <laughs> yes, Madison and I, to be fair, my fiance also was like, uh, who's a reporter, was like, this doesn't pass a smell test. And Madison, you wrote a great piece about Thank you. How to spot <laughs> BS stories like this. Absolutely. <laughs> so walk us through the steps. Sure. So I sort of wrote this piece tongue in cheek, but the steps work very literally. <laughs> Step one, <laughs> if the person tweeting has cast themselves as the hero, you should start to be suspicious. None of these viral stories ever feature a main character or feature the tweeter as a, a witness, a bystander, or just somebody, you know, who plays a supporting role. They're always the hero. They always get the girl. They always win the day. Right. So that suspicious. Okay. <laughs> Whenever yeah, because you never say I was the one who did this horrible thing. Right. right. Let me share this with right. you. Right. Exactly. Step number two is uh, look for all caps if somebody is aggressively shouting at you. Um, <laughs> they want your attention. They really want your attention. They're very excited about uh -huh. this. Um, number three is if it takes more than one tweet to tell. That so, was interesting, that one, because people generally, this one went on and on and on, and it's and they actually highlighted by saying, I'm about to tell you a story. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So if it takes more than one tweet, you know, be, be brief, be seated is advice best given on Twitter, I think. Think. And if you get more and more into the details, there's a reason people who are good at lying often avoid getting into details because that's where you trip up. Uh, step number four is if someone appears to be telling the story to a wide audience before they have so much as a single retweet, people who sit down and say, I'm going to tell you a story, gather around, folks. Right. Be questionable. And then number five is if there are follow up threads. The guy from the graveyard tweet thread has two more stories involving a person experiencing homelessness who his kids donate $3,000 to, and then that person meets a friend friend of his who says, I'm, I'm having suicidal thoughts, come rescue me. The homeless person and the woman with suicidal thoughts meet. They're now engaged. <laughs> right, right. So, <laughs> so you know what tipped me off is when I looked at his, his name. Yeah. It's at six Sixth form, form poet. poet. And when I read poet, I thought, oh, this is like a sort of art form for him. And then I totally dismissed. I almost didn't read it to the very end. I sort of dismissed it because I realized, oh, this is just, you know. And to I, be fair, we're not. I mean, you, you actually went back and you looked uh, to see. You did some investigative reporting to see if there was a man in Sussex, England, who had committed uh, these heinous murders on Christmas on Day Christmas. <laughs> of all days, and you didn't find that that had mm -hmm. happened. We're not necessarily uh, saying that this is fake, but when you did some reporting, it turned out that you couldn't find any mm -hmm. evidence that this had actually happened. And can we stress, I mean, how long did it take you to do that reporting? Oh, it was a simple Google search. Right, <laughs> <laughs> right exactly. So, so um, you also point that there have been other instances where people are doing this because there is a goal. Mm -hmm. It's either to get a book deal or to get a movie deal. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I think the, the most famous instance of this is the story of Zola, which is a... Remind our audience who's, who's the Zola story. The year is 2015, and a couple of strippers are taking a road trip through Florida, and shenanigans ensue. And that uh, has been purchased, is, is currently in production to become a movie. And that was sort of the origin point of this, you know, crazy viral fake story, or partially fake. You know, Zola later in interviews said, you know, parts were true, parts were dramatized. But that was sort of ground zero for where these stories began. More recently, we saw a Twitter user named named Shane Morris tweet a crazy story about a road trip where he bought a van and scammed a member of MS-13 out of a brick of heroin that he had forgotten was in the van. <laughs> um, 
uh, Shane Morris later came clear uh, and said that he was concerned for his life because he was afraid that actual members of MS-13 mm. might be out to get him. Yeah, see, as he lied about their gang. Yes, yes. So, so, and I, I think we should be clear. This isn't necessarily fake news. No. It's just fiction. Correct. Fiction writing on social media mm -hmm. or fiction writing on Twitter. Mm -hmm. There's a difference. There's absolutely a difference. But the thing here is, these stories are funny and entertaining at first glance because you think they're true. Anybody could write this sort of outlandish fiction where things go crazy and then things go right and and you escape the fiery kaboom in the end, but. It's more entertaining if you believe that it's real, right? And that's the fine line. Is there a danger, though, that, for example, somebody could write a story of fiction on Twitter, and at the end they say, you know, which means now I've lost my home and my family. Donate to a GoFundMe page, and people feel bad, and they are taken in and donate money to what is a fake, essentially a fake account. Absolutely, but I think Twitter users are are fairly smart when it comes to that end of the story. Just and not Vlad. Just not Vlad. Sorry. <laughs> you know, Sorry no, but I think, you know, what you're describing is a deliberate attempt at defrauding mm -hmm. people. Right. What these people are doing, are cre it's creative yeah. writing. Yeah. And I think we have to really be more critical about the information that we consume online. Yeah. Not just critical of the mainstream media, <laughs> right. Right? Right. right? I mean, right. just in general, ask yourself, what's the likelihood that I would have never heard of, you know, somebody killing their entire family mm. on Christmas Day? That would have been a major news story. I already feel bad, Amory. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> um, this is really, really a great piece. Uh, I urge our viewers to check it out on the New York Magazine website, the Intelligent Intelligencer page. Um, you have more stuff that you write like this. You're always doing like a lot yeah, of sweet things. So I, I spend uh, a lot of time on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Really great to have you. Thank you so much for stopping Thank by, you. Madison.